So what you're about to see next is me solving a lead code problem from my course, JavaScript and Lead Code, the Interview Bootcamp, where we solve the 75 most important lead code problems using, of course, JavaScript and a JavaScript testing package called Jest. Anyways, the links to that course are in the description below. I hope you enjoy the video. All right, so this video will be dedicated to the pseudocode for finding the minimum in a rotated sorted array. So what is a rotated sorted array? It's when you grab a sorted array and then shift a certain value up or down a certain amount. So let's take zero here. Looks like they shift zero up uh, four index places, right? And so if we go from zero to the right, it's still sorted from least to greatest, but then we have to kind of wrap around. So this array is no longer truly sorted. There's a rotation. And so to find the minimum in a rotated sorted array, the brute force solution is linear search. Just manually check every value in the sorted array and find the smallest value, which is zero. That will give us a linear time complexity of O of n, and in an interview setting, this would fail. Because here's a good rule of thumb. If lead code or an interviewer asks you to solve a problem that involves sorted data, they want you to solve it in log n time complexity. We're going to make use of binary search to find the minimum in a rotated sorted array. But then the next question you're going to ask is, how can we run a binary search on a rotated sorted array? It's no longer truly sorted. Well, in the pseudocode, I explain how we're going to do that. So in our code, first check if the array was rotated in the first place. Because in an unrotated sorted array, the first value is always less than the last value. This makes sense. Uh, in, a, in a normal sorted array, values go from least to greatest. If we're working with an unrotated sorted array, aka a normal sorted array, we know the smallest value is just the first number, right? It goes from least to greatest. So our code will return 1 here because we detect we're working with a normal sorted array because the first value is less than the last value. Now, here's the next pattern I want you to notice. If a sorted array is rotated, the first value is always greater than the last value, right? This makes sense because in unrotated sorted array, it goes from least to greatest. Okay. How do we find the minimum in a rotated sorted array? You want to find the inflection point, all right? And remember again, a normal sorted array, numbers go from least to greatest. Left to right, least to greatest. So if anything breaks this pattern, we're at an inflection point. If number to left is larger, we are at minimum. So we're at 1. We notice that the number to the left is larger when it should be smaller. We know our minimum is 1. Or, similarly, if we're at number and the number to the right is smaller when it should be larger, then we know the number to the right is the minimum. These are our two conditions to check if the value we are on is near inflection point. So, here's how we're what we're going to do. We're going to conduct a binary search. Make sure you're familiar with that. We'll have a left and right pointer, a mid pointer. Calculate the mid value. See the mid values at an inflection point. And it meets this inflection point condition. If number to the right of mid is smaller, then the number to the right is the minimum. So our code will say, oh, 1 is the minimum in a rotated sorted array. Great. But what if the the mid value is not an inflection point, such as, it, such as in these two examples here, right? So these are two different rotated sorted arrays. The mid values are not at an inflection point. What do we do? So let's see. If mid is not an inflection point, we're going to calculate the mid value with the value at the left pointer. If mid is greater than the left, move left up to mid. So in this example, we can see the minimum is on the right half. So if mid is greater than the left, move left up to mid so we can focus on the right half. Similarly, if mid is smaller than left, move right down to mid. We can see very easily here that the minimum is in the left half of this rotated sorted array. And so if the mid is greater than the left, we want to explore only the left half, move right down. 
and repeat binary search until mid is finally at the inflection point, and the inflection point is if any of these two conditions are met again. And this is the pseudocode for everything we just went through in this video. All right, in the next video, we're going to implement everything we learned here. I'll see you guys there. All right, so in this video, we're going to implement the pseudocode that I went over in the previous video. So in the terminal, make sure you're seed into the course directory, exercises folder, run this jest command. That will run our test suite. Everything fails. And let's get started. So we're doing a modified binary search, and it has to be a left and right pointer. So I'll say let left. It's the first value, so we'll say index 0, right? And then right has to be the last value in the input array. So we want to grab the index, the last index. So let right be equal to nums.length minus 1. Now, let's go over our exception cases first. If nums.length is equal to 1, so if the input array is just one number long, the smallest value is that one number itself, right? So return nums at index 0. Then, next edge case is it's not rotated at all. So I'll say if nums left is less than nums right, right, first value is less than last value, we're in a normal sorted array, just return, well, the first value. So nums left, this should be left here. Otherwise, we are in a rotated sorted array, we're going to run binary search. So, this is just binary search code, right? While left is less than or equal to right. Hmm, I'll say, let's calculate that mid index. So const mid is equal to math.floor left plus right divide by 2. And to make my code a bit easier to read, I want to create a lot of variables. So I'll say const left val is equal to nums at index left, const mid val is equal to nums, the input array at the mid index, so nums mid. Now remember our inflection point, we check the, the number, one number to the left of mid, and we check the number, one number to the right of mid. So I'll say const left of mid is equal to nums at mid minus 1, right? That's the one number to the left of mid. Let's check to the right of mid. So const right of mid is equal to nums at index mid plus 1. And now let's have our code check if mid is at the inflection point. And remember from the pseudocode, we are at an inflection point if the mid val is greater than the right of mid value, right? Because all values to the right should be smaller in a normal sorted array. And if that's the case, then our minimum is actually the number to the right of mid. So I'll just say return right of mid. Else, if the number to the left of mid is actually greater than the mid value, right? Because remember, all numbers to the left in a normal sorted array should be smaller, but if the number to the left of mid is greater, then we know our mid number is the, mi the minimum itself. So I'll say return mid, uh, return mid val. Otherwise, if these, if this code never runs, we know our mid value is not at the inflection point. So we need to shift left or right accordingly. So I'll say if mid val is greater than left val, left equals mid plus one, right? This should be all be from the pseudocode else right equals mid minus 1, and we'll always find the uh, minimum value in a rotated sort of array. So no need to write anything after this while loop. Right, Our mid will eventually be the inflection point. I will save, and all our tests pass. So let's make sure our code also passes the lead code test. 
I'm going to copy it, head on over, paste, submit. All right, great, they pass. So, what is find minimum in rotate sort array? What's the complexity analysis? Time complexity is O of log n. We've performed a binary search, just modified a little bit. At the end of the day, which e with each while loop iteration, we eliminate half of the remaining array to search for. And space complexity is O of 1. All right, that concludes this video. Hey, it's me again. I hope you found my solution video helpful, and I plan on releasing more free content in the future. And to be notified of that kind of stuff, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and that little notification bell icon. I'll see you soon.